Before watching the movie Birds of Prey Harley Quinn, formerly known in theaters as Harley Quinn Birds of Prey, formerly known on the release date as Birds of Prey and the Fabulous Emancipation of One Harley Quinn, I was like, I never heard of this movie. And it was because they changed the name 15 fucking times and it confused me so much that I ended up spending $100 on Sonic movie tickets to pump up the box office numbers in some type of anti-woke protest state of psychosis. I wish I could give you more details than that, but anything that happened before March feels like five goddamn years ago, and being anti-woke has now become more exhausting than hating woke people. The point I'm trying to make is if you want me to go see the sequel to the Oscar-winning movie Suicide Squad starring Jared Leto, well then you fucking put Jared Leto in the goddamn movie. You make a music video with Rick Ross and Skrillex to promote it. It's not that complicated. Laugh all you want, but it's a proven method. Suicide Squad profited more than half a billion dollars at the box office, and why? Because people want to see the Joker. We don't care if he's old or terrifying or cringe or only in the movie for 10 fucking seconds. Just put him in the goddamn movie and I'll show up. The movie could be terrible. It could be the worst fucking Joker movie in the goddamn world. Guess what? People in real life don't give a shit. They're used to being disappointed all the time. Or they have terrible tastes like me and they actually enjoy the Jared Leto Joker. Bitch, my cross. I know my public opinion on the Jared Leto Joker has been a somewhat popular and controversial topic in the past. Since I started my channel, my only goal has been to take my viewers on the journey that I've been on. When Jared Leto was announced as Joker, I was his biggest supporter. I wanted the movie to be the best thing ever made. The trailer was the best movie trailer I'd ever seen in my life. But when the movie came out, I was so disgusted with a giant pile of garbage, I could barely watch the screen. There is a three year gap between the movie's release and my rant about why I hated it so much. I let it brew in my heart for three years until I eventually exploded hot, juicy Jared Leto hate all over YouTube. At least they were used. Uh, Who did you send used condoms to? Oh, everybody. Um, maybe they didn't want to tell you, but no, I mean, I did a lot of things to, to create a dynamic. And as soon as it was out, I was finally able to begin the healing process. Like most of America, I had hated the Jared Leto Joker, but now he's older and more mature and ready to open my heart to forgiveness and love. Not to mention, since the announcement of the Snyder Cut, Ayer's been a lot more vocal about how much of his movie was completely butchered by the studio. At one point, even saying that we were robbed of Jared Leto's Joker performance. And when I read that, something happened in my heart. He's beginning to believe. I believe that America was robbed of the real Jared Leto Joker performance, and right now our nation needs Jared Leto's Joker more than ever before. What better metaphor for the collective psyche of our country than the Joker's signature damage tattoo? Because right now, as a nation, we are damaged. I can't believe I fucking wrote that. I know this all sounds one-dimensional, but the last Joker was too complicated for America, and according to the news, it created an army of incels. So let's just keep things nice and simple right now. The only thing Jared Leto Joker has ever inspired was for people to do sick airbrush art and some shitty Halloween costumes. Hopefully now I've brought you full circle. You may not like the Jared Leto Joker yourself, but you understand there are people out there like me and people in prison that do. So imagine my absolute disgust when I turned on the Birds of Prey movie to find out the entire premise revolves around Jared Leto not being in the movie. What kind of confusing bullshit is this? They are so embarrassed by the Jared Leto Joker that they opt to just draw cartoons for exposition dumps, yet simultaneously he is so important he is brought up a minute and 56 seconds into the goddamn movie and then also mentioned 37 fucking times after that. How are you going to bring up the Jared Leto Joker 37 times in a movie and hire this stand-in so you can just phone it in and film the back of his head? This wig looks worse than the Jared Leto Joker Halloween wigs, and that's saying a lot. Also, Jared Leto's Joker is known for having some serious drip. I don't know what these rags are, but the Jared Leto Joker I know wouldn't be caught dead in this cheap outfit. How shitty of a movie do you have to make to not even be able to do justice to Jared Leto's Joker? How is your movie so heavily reliant on the Jared Leto Joker while simultaneously hiding him in the closet the entire goddamn movie? And that's when it hit me. The only way to save this movie would be to put Jared Leto in it. All right, so this movie actually wasn't that terrible. Uh, I even laughed at a couple parts. The only cringe stuff was when the writers tried to be like Deadpool, and when they tried to convince me this woman was a scary person. I don't have rage issues! 
Uh, besides that, it was actually a pretty solid script with some fun characters. Is that a snot bubble? Ew, gross. Oh, I've changed my mind. Peel it off. Uh, we have two huge glaring issues that need to be addressed in Birds of Prey. Number one. The best part about Suicide Squad was Margot Robbie's ass. That was the only reason I considered watching this and for some reason it was not featured as heavily in this movie. Things like this stick out to me and shows me this movie is desperately lacking the creative vision of David Ayer. There are no shots like this in Birds of Prey. Basically just throw the concept of cinematography and art out the window and decide to put Harley in some fucking weird hybrid coat with pom-pom sleeves. Number two, and the most glaring mistake in this movie. How are you gonna mention the Jared Leto Joker 37 times in one movie and not show the Joker? Seriously, it does not take a rocket scientist to tell you that there is a serious lack of Joker in this film. Yet it's something no one is saying because everyone's too afraid to have the idea that Jared Leto Joker could have saved this movie. And I'll tell you the exact part he could have made his entrance. Right here. Imagine the entire marketing of this movie happened the exact same way. All right, maybe not the exact same way because changing the name 15 fucking times didn't do anyone any favors. But imagine if they still marketed this strictly as a Birds of Prey movie and the Joker and Harley broke up and all that same nonsense. Everyone would go into this movie with zero expectations. If you market Jared Leto Joker as being in this movie, well then YouTube is going to have a field day for six months before release and no one will ever give it a chance. But if you put Jared in the movie and keep it under wraps and don't reveal it until the climax of the film, then suddenly Jared's surprise appearance would become a welcome addition instead of met with skepticism. Admit it, if you were watching this movie and Jared Leto's Joker showed up out of nowhere, I'd be like, holy shit, he's back. Where the hell is this movie going from here? The final cut of Suicide Squad may have been a huge heaping pile of trash, but there's no denying that Margot Robbie and Jared Leto actually had very good on-screen chemistry. If Jared popped up at the end of this movie because he caught wind that Harley was in trouble, I think that actually adds a lot of depth to this movie as well as Jared Leto's Joker. This would essentially be the first scene in movie history that Jared Leto's Joker would be able to organically breathe on screen. This would be the first time he actually had any sort of impact on a scene besides breaking Harley out of prison. Throw in a couple lines from Joker about he couldn't let his gal have all the fun, Harley could bark back that she was doing just fine without him. Seeing Joker and Harley beat people up together and having witty banter amongst themselves in a speeding car chase would give this a serious spark at the end that is noticeably missing from this film. Also, you could have Jared just get punched right in the fucking face. Like during the car fight sequence, one of the thugs just decks Jared right in the fucking mouth, just fucking punches the shit out of him in his teeth and his mouth and his bleeding is spinning out blood and the thug is just punching Jared in the mouth over and over and over and over and Jared falls down and slowly Jared raises his hand to pop his jaw back into place. The entire movie has been leading up to this moment where Harley has the chance to be back with Mr. J, but instead she realizes she's caught in the same toxic cycle that got her here in the first place. She's tired of chasing and being chased by the Joker, and instead she chooses to be single and face her problems without him. This would actually complete her character arc in the movie as going from a depressed girl who has been dumped and biggest personality trait as being the Joker's girlfriend to discovering that she's someone that is strong enough to handle her own shit and can finally resist the temptation of the Jared Leto Joker. For the first time in their relationship, the Joker hears Harley say no, and that's a serious blow to his ego. Harley then kicks him out of the car and continues fighting Black Mask without him, and now you've pulled a complete 180 in the Joker-Harley dynamic that could carry over and help set up the solo Jared Leto Joker movie. Yes, my idea ends with there being a solo Jared Leto Joker movie, which is an idea that's just stupid enough to work. A solo Jared Leto Joker movie would begin the healing process of our nation, and it's what I originally thought I was getting when I went to see Suicide Squad. So what's the worst that could happen if we try that idea one more time? Fool me once, strike one. But fool me twice, strike three. See you next time, Janitor Squad. <laughs> Shout out to all the members of the Jared Leto fan club, Jake, Nikolai, Caleb, Nicholas, Elliot, Starside Vanguard, Kyle, Omar, Patio Furniture, Mr. Necron, Joseph, Christopher, Lawrence, and Mark.